Um, this is a, yeah. a far bigger turnout, I think, than we expected. So uh, thank you all for coming out. Um, I'm Peter Green, I'm the interim chair of Back Garden, which is the middle residence uh, group. Uh, you may not know, but Swindon is pretty avant-garde about local democracy. And, uh, it encourages through an initiative called Connecting People, Connecting Places. Um, residents' associations, resident bodies. Uh, there are three in Esker, there's the Kings Hill Area uh, Association, and then on the other side, Queen's Park, Queen's Council, and Back Garden in, in the middle. So, uh, I'm the interim chair because we haven't got round yet to having a general meeting, but it's on the 5th, Saturday the 5th of May, we're having a clean-up on the Cross Street Alley, so if you, uh, alley, so if you want to come along and beat the living daylights out of some nettles first, then dive into the beehive and have a business meeting. You're very welcome. So that's uh, Saturday, 5th of May. So, it's wonderful to be here. We are a very non-political residence association. Um, we try, whenever we hold things, not to take a party line over anything. Some of you will know what my politics are. They're not relevant really to this meeting. This is an opportunity for everybody to ask questions especially, I think, at this kind of local level where it's important that you've got commitment uh, from local people. So we're non-political, but it doesn't mean we don't want to work with politicians. They're very important people. So we're also very pleased at the, the interest that's been shown by the three parties. Uh, I think it's uh, often too easy to criticise councillors, but it's uh, a job which is pretty thankless. Um, as maybe we'll find out later on tonight when uh, questions get asked. I have an apology uh, before we get properly underway. Um, the Conservative Party agent emailed me this middle of the afternoon and apologised profusely for screwing up. Uh, and said nothing was meant to, don't read anything into us not coming. It was just one of those things that happened. Okay, so the programme for tonight, and, uh, and we will obviously adapt it because we're depending on how it develops, we've never done this before. The idea is in the first part of the meeting, we will ask the three parties to talk for no more than 10 minutes about why they, you, they think they've got the answers to the problems, why you should be interested in them. We'll then have another break for some tea and coffee and you can nobble them and talk to them individually. Uh, there are question forms on the seats. If you want to write a question down and hand it in, we will then use that tea break time just to look at the questions and try and get a, a spread um, so that we don't find the supporters of one party have handed in 50 questions or asking why the other two parties are no good. We'll try and get that balance, but given the numbers of people here, we can then, I think, quit it pretty quickly move on to just questions from the floor. So that's the, the, the structure. I will try and be rude and cut people short because everybody needs to have a chance to talk. We have to be out of here at quarter to ten. So, uh, please, if I ask you to shut up, please do, and then you can hit me afterwards. Um, we will also, with the speakers, I have got my, uh, my phone set to make a funny noise after 10 minutes, so please rapidly shut up so we don't have the embarrassment of saying, sit down. We also don't have uh, any microphones, so hopefully people will speak loudly. Okay? So, a moment ago, we did um, do a draw for the running order of the first section uh, and to see which party would talk first. So, the running order went Labour, Lib Dem in the centre, and Greens. So, can I invite Andy Newman? Mm -hmm. I can stand, stand up. up. Yeah, stand I think up. I just find it easier to talk standing up, it's not because of dictatorial uh, ambitions. Um, thank you very much for coming, all of you, and thank you very much for um, the Back Garden campaign, and Peter, I'm sure, has been more than uh, involved his fair share in organising this, so thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to put forward our pitch for why you should support us in the election. Um, now, we're not interested in a ding-dong between political parties, um, so I'd like to you know, thank the other candidates from the other parties for coming along as well, and I hope this, I'm sure they will agree that we'll make this as constructive as we can. Um, and also I think that this is, a, in, in a way, a very good platform. Um, in a sense, there's four parties represented here, because I do think the fact that the Conservatives haven't come does reflect 
you know, whatever they're saying, but don't take this into account. It does reflect the way they see the Escot election. Um, I'm not going to say any more than that. But, the, the, um, but as well as the different programs of the different parties, in a sense, there's also three different philosophies um, about local democracy being demonstrated here. Now, I've known Bill for a long time. He's a great bloke, and he's very principled. Um, I think Bill would say he's on the left of the Green Party. And, you know, in terms of his political values, I would agree with uh, a large part of, of what Bill says. And the, what the Green Party is standing in this election, I think, is to say, to give you the opportunity, if you're a Green voter or a Green supporter, to put your heart, you know, to, to vote for what you absolutely believe in. Um, now, I would say that, actually, in terms of what we believe in, as the three Labour candidates here, is not very different, you know, in terms of environmental sustainability, in terms of, you know, I certainly was associated with the anti-war campaign in, in Swindon, and, you know, I personally would think I've got a lot in common with Bill. So, I think, actually, you know, the, the idea of voting for the party you completely agree with um, is a good one, but I don't think actually there's a huge difference between what the Green Party and Labour stand for. And I think that has actually been proven in Brighton, where the Green Party hold the Brighton Council now. They've actually behaved very much like a Labour Council. Um, so I think, you know, that, that is an interesting issue. Now, the Lib Dems are making a pitch in this election saying, let's get back to basics, this is all about what councillors can do in this ward and what we can do for you as ward councillors for local democracy, getting it right about graffiti and, you know, the dog mess and car parking. And absolutely, I agree. I mean, they do that. They do a good job. We can do a good job too. We've proven that over the last couple of years where we've been working this board that you don't have to be the councillors in order to take up issues and to resolve things for residents. And what I would like to see is that, to be honest, all of us here on this table, I'm sure, are interested in doing what's the best for Swindon and what's the best for Escoff. And I honestly don't think that when it comes down to it, that issues like sorting out car parking and sorting out drainage on the street, or sorting out graffiti are part of political issues. I mean, these are issues where all of us are standing on the basis that we are competent, we will be hardworking, we're committed to this area, and the Lib Dems and myself, I think, would do an equally competent job. Um, you know, there are Labour councillors in other wards in Swindon who are doing a good job on all of those issues. And if we're elected, then we will continue to do a good job as the Lib Dems have done. And we've already, even not being the councillors, working on all of those issues. Now, what the Labour Party's pitch, which is different, we're not saying, you know, this is a vote, you know, for, for, for principle, you know, against the three parties. We're not saying we're only about the local ward, which effectively is what the Lib Dems have to say, because they've only really got a chance in Escot this time around. What we're saying is that, for us, it's about who controls the council. We've had 10 years of a Conservative council, and only at a Swindon-wide level can the Labour offer an alternative to taking control of the council. Because every single council is up, that is something which is a real possibility this time round. Now, there are a number of things there. First of all, even if you were a Tory voter, the, the Tory council have been disastrous. I mean, what the Tories normally try and represent themselves as is the people who are careful with public money. Now, the Tories came in ten years ago, Twinborough Council had a £6 million surplus in the bank, they've now got an £80 million deficit, they spent things like £400,000 on Wi-Fi, and nobody's got free Wi-Fi, they spent a fortune on the arrival in the middle of town, the, the fountain, you know, they spent... Um, They've wasted the money on the tabernacle stones. There's been a number of vanity projects. And also what they've shown is really a certain contempt for people in terms of their accountability, their lack of transparency, um, their, their inability to engage with the popular. You know, whatever you think, for example, of the, the proposal to build a school at Croft, the consultation and the way it's been dealt with has been abysmal. You know, so we have got a commitment coming in that a Labour council will be transparent, it will consult people, it will be democratic, you know, in terms of its budget priorities, if we get to set the budget in 2013, we will be consulting with community groups and with trade unions and with businesses and, you know, all the stakeholders in Swindon and we will make a real effort to be a council for Swindon. But the other thing is that Swindon desperately cries out for leadership, for, to bring jobs and growth. Now, the Labour Party has always had a view of Swindon that to be honest, it's not as pretty or beautiful as Bath or Oxford. And therefore, there has to be a reason why people come and live here. And the reason is, is that we've been able to offer employers um, a reason to come here. There's a skilled workforce, 
Um, it's a harmonious town with the relatively low price and the lowest crime in the UK. And what we try to do is to say that to bring, to make people want to live here, you've got to make it a nice place. You know, so we've got nice parks, we've got good um, leisure centres and community centres. And sustaining a good standard of living for Swindon is very important in order to make it attractive to bring jobs here and to make it attractive for people to live. And that's why Labour said there have been a number of areas that the Tories have basically failed to bring any jobs in their 10 years to Swindon. They, have, they put the regeneration and the, the economic development of, uh, of the town into the hands of a private company for Swindon who have done almost nothing. So one of our pledges is we will bring that back into council control and the councillors will fight for Swindon to bring jobs here and to make standard living as good as it can be for ordinary working people in Swindon. We will be a relatively modest council. There won't be any whiz bands and uh, fireworks going off. What we're going to try and do is concentrate on doing a good job of running Swindon. Um, you know, so you know, I think the most exciting place that we've got is that we're going to increase the pothole budget. You know, but we will. We've also said that we're going to start building council houses again. We're going to look at exploring a number of ways of you know addressing the problems that that people in, in Swindon have. Um, you know, and housing being one, jobs being another, regeneration, a number of issues which need to be dealt with. Um, and that is why, when you come to vote, then I hope you'll think about it and think, do we want a Conservative Council with its arrogance, its lack of consultation, its profligate waste of public money, money on vanity projects, its inability to stand up for Swindon, you know, in the national political sphere, and the fact that it hasn't brought um, jobs and regeneration to this town, or shall we go with a Labour Council with the pledges that we're making that we're going to be a steady pair of hands that's going to look after Swindon, do the job well, run the place well, but also really fight for Swindon at a national level to bring jobs here, to regenerate our town, to build on our railway heritage and our heritage as being a, a working class town, that we will make Swindon a place we can all be proud of to live in. I love Swindon. I've, you know, I've lived here for 20 plus years now. I'm, I really like the place, and you know, it gets a bad press, but what we're promising is that we will have a council that stands up for Swindon and stands up for the ordinary people of Swindon. Now, so when you come to vote, you have a choice between three different philosophies. You can vote Green for what the Green Party believes in, you can vote Lib Dem, and you know, they do do a good job as councillors, but the, the height of their ambition, and I think this would be fair, in this election is that they can keep their seats in Escot. They can't take control of the council, and therefore, you know, the most that can happen is they can hold the balance of power between Labour and Tories. And this is, to be honest, less democratic. Because what it means is, instead of the electors having a choice of whether you have a Tory or Labour council, it means that there's horse trading behind closed doors of the political parties. Or you can choose to go with Labour, and what we're saying is that we will run Swindon well, we'll run it for the benefit of Swindon people, and to do that, Labour needs to win an escort. You know, this, it's been, the idea that Labour couldn't win in Escot has been one that's been around for a number of years. We can win. You know, if we win here, we will win Swindon, and Swindon will be a better place for the Labour Council than with the Conservative Council. Thank you, Andy. Um, and you've saved us 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't work out how to stop it. No, 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 only gets 45 seconds. It's the same as just a minute. <laughs> So thank you for that. It, it's rather unusual to be at a meeting where somebody ends with an exhortation and you all go and nobody applauds. But it is a, it's not that kind of meeting, I, I don't know. So that, Andy Newman from the Labour Party. Stan? Yeah. From the Dems? Paycheck. Paycheck, so you, you came in the middle. So. I did, yes. Not in the middle of politics, I hope. No. <laughs> Right. Mm. It's funny, actually, um, who actually made a mistake about my name, because I, I, we've always used this Payjack. I've always thought that was actually the best way of actually making people pronounce it correctly, because the true pronunciation of it actually would be Pionk, because it's a <laughs> Polish name, meaning spider. Um, so I, ne I never heard anyone comment on self stand spider. I found it may, may, may give me a gig on a pop show, but it wouldn't be good as a politician. Um, but politics is, is a strange thing. And I've been, I've been involved in politics when I was first elected um, oh, 27 years ago on the Borough Council. And Andy actually makes a, a lot of good points about politics, how it changes and metamorphoses into one thing or another. And obviously now seeing that obviously he's putting the idea that you know, Labour can revolutionise, actually be a good power. 
But you always have to remember how the Crusaders got in, because actually they worked on the example of how bad labor was in the past. So politics does change. The one thing I've understood about politics is actually, is actually trying to involve people. So if I was going to put any cliches about my life in politics, it's actually trying to put people first, making people responsible, getting people involved. Peter alluded actually to actually about, well, this, that's actually this group here, the back garden. And I believe there's actually a role for, for people actually to take power. I've been involved in community councils, and actually I'm the chairman of the Queen's Park Community Council. And that is all about involving people. I think that's crucial in politics. Because no matter what you say, it's, it's our lives that politics actually involves. In the Swindon Borough Council, you're actually involved in Swindon Borough Council the moment, the moment you open your front door. The pavements, the highways, the schools in nearby, it's all about local issues. And they are important. The councillor has many roles. One of them is almost like a liaison, a liaison person, like you contact your councillor to get, to get a, a problem solved. Has anybody done that? I'm sure you must have done trying to get to... Yes, or else. <laughs> Somebody's actually come down with the council gets some work done, and it's a, it's a good role. And I think that's important. So it always has been that element. Uh, when I first started in politics, there was, we, well, for, for enough, it was actually, probably actually on the queue, I was actually trying to get there. The Kings of Perth King Crossing many years ago. It's all about that, trying to actually involve people, get things done for people. So we will never change from that. Uh, and you also alluded actually to um, how the parties are similar, I think. Uh, and in truth, that's probably true, because when actually we set the budget for 2012, there was no alternative budget ourselves. We actually put points forward, but we did not put a, another budget. And again, uh, Labour didn't put another budget, because we all work under the offices of actually national government, who more or less set actually what money we can actually, make, we can actually claim from people. So we are, we are governed by finances. It's actually what you do with those finances that are important. And I think that's crucially important. Uh, I suppose we're here for the Escot Hustian, so it's all, all about es Escot, in a sense. Um, although Andy takes it to a different plane, he talks actually about whether we can take control of the council. But in truth, that could happen. It's up to the, the people there. They actually have the decision, because the, the first time in over a decade, you are deciding the whole council. Aye, the whole council is up for election. You can decide. I often think with three votes, it's a bit, a bit like the X Factor, without a very good prize. Uh, in the sense that obviously you can actually use your votes whether you do it on party lines, people lines, or maybe some people may actually just vote on a nice sounding name. I don't know, but they actually have two have three votes in most of the wards. So it's a peculiar election. And obviously uh, you are, you are voting on many, many grounds. I mean, does everybody here vote on party grounds? Who votes on party grounds? Anybody vote on party grounds? Yes, there must be somebody votes on party grounds. <laughs> All right, how about individual grounds? Have you voted for individuals? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. So that does show actually how interesting it can be to get individuals on there. And if anything, as Liberal Democrats, what well, one of our aims is, if we actually have a say in power, so I hope that it may be a potential idea, it may be a balanced council. And obviously, we'll actually make sure that we actually have the best people on that council. Um, I mean, as you may be aware, the council operates under a cabinet system, which actually sets a few individuals who more or less control most of the thing, which is an awful system. It's very undemocratic. And almost you could actually have one extra councillor and you could be almost in complete control of the council. Which I don't believe is a good thing. Does anybody else believe it's a good thing? No. All right, I'll vote you down there. No, no. <laughs> no, but the council system is not a system geared for actually good politics. It actually, actually puts power into people's hands right at the top and nobody else really has a role in it. As councillors actually play a game, really, actually, in council meetings where you put forward motions and like that, knowing it's going to be defeated because of the nature of the, the numbers getting there. So it actually has seen a problem there. And there has been a devolution or devolution of power, which is localities, which actually we form here part of the, the Escort locality or central Swindon. So the idea of actually putting more powers to people, which I think is a good thing. I think everybody would actually do that. <laughs> really actually just as far as we go to put more power in people's hands. As Liberal Democrats, we've always stood for that. Our, 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 well, as you see in our leaflets, it's all about that, trying to involve people. We're actually creating actually neighborhood areas or anything else. It's all about putting more power in people's hands. If nothing else, I hope that's what to do. Now, there may be examples where people feel, feel it hasn't gone that way. And that may be an example of actually how the pros failed. Consultation, because uh, Mrs. Boyd up there would be very, very keen to hear that word about consultation. But you have to have <laughs> effective consultation. Um, she was actually involved very much in the Croft Primary School. They went to consultation, but it wasn't a real consultation. I, I think that's true to say, in a sense. An ambush. An ambush in the sense that if you give people 
Yeah, what's going to happen before it happens more is actually fall inside. So there has to be a real transparency in all council decisions. Again, that's what we're going to stand for. And I think we'd all testify the importance of that. And again, Andy referred to the Wi-Fi mess. And that's all about transparency. It was very, un nobody really understood how it all happened, really. And it wasn't transparent. A council that works like that, actually, where it's all behind hidden doors, is not a good council. And if anything, that's one of the biggest criticisms of Conservatives. It was a feeling that your involvement was only piecemeal. It wasn't a real involvement. And if anything, you really need that to be feel part of it. So again, the Liberal Down problem is all about that. Involvement of people and trying to get the things that you want done. Uh, and I think it's probably been a testimony of all the, all the time I've been as a councillor. It hasn't always been easy. Uh, when I was first elected, back, all the way back in 85, we actually took control of the county council by default. I, we were not the biggest party, but um, Labour didn't want to, to get involved. And obviously the Conservatives were beaten by the Labour and the Liberal Democrat votes together. So we took it by default. And the one thing I learned when you become in power is how difficult it becomes, because suddenly you're in charge of the money. And then you start to make hard decisions, i.e. not just your pet projects, but actually where you spend money. That's always going to be a hard, a hard, a hard, a hard problem. I think we we'll probably all testify to that, and I'll show you actually how you guys are on budgets now. Do you all have problems with your budgets at home? All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is difficult. So politics is difficult, and actually being a councillor can be difficult. But I think what we're trying to say in actually our manifesto is actually we will represent you and actually get the things that you want, and keep in touch, not just at election time, but all the year round. Those are the classic phrases we've always used, and those are the classic beliefs that we've always had. And I think they're the right, they're the right thing. I suppose I have to talk a bit about politics, because I know Andy was almost given this glorious picture, but I mean, the reason why the Tories took more and more control was actually Swindon was in such problems that uh, it was actually more or less taken over by the government, in effect. All our education was taken over out of our, out of our hands, or our policies were taken out of our hand, and they brought in Mr. Pitt to actually to, to took, it all, took, it, took it all over. So they were difficult times, and, and that was the reason why I consider this started to come on strong. There is another other strange thing, I have to tell you the truth, that Swindon often reflects an anti-government vote. If Labour are in government, it usually does go to the opposition parties. And again, if the Conservatives are in, there is a tendency more people to vote for Labour. No, it's not going to change, not going to change the government, it will change the council. So there is some odd things there. Now we have a coalition government, I'm not quite clear where that puts the Liberal Democrats, really. We do. <laughs> <laughs> so we have put in both camps, but obviously we appear to be the opposition to the government, but actually can actually put more pressure on them than ever before. And it's a strange experience being a Liberal Democrat. Actually, we are getting some of our policies through. The idea of taking people out, you know, out of income tax completely and things like that there. So it's a very strange experience, and I think we still haven't quite got used to it, actually, how we can put more pressure on the government to do our things. But it seems to be happening. So it's again an example of coalition in, in B. So again, if the council does result in a, in a balanced council, I believe we can make sure that's his one that actually means we can get our policies through. I think hopefully for the benefit of Swindon, actually, people, people here. Swindon is a, a very interesting time. I don't know about you, but it feels a very dynamic time. The town centre is incredibly changing. We actually have on our doorstep, hopefully, the de demolition of the college. Don't hold your breath. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, but obviously with that, you'll have a, a cinema, a Marston supermarket, the idea of a restaurant, something that actually make you feel good about Swindon. Yes, I, I, I'm not sure about 30 seconds. All right, very, very quick. I've lived in Swindon all my life, and I think it's about time to actually start changing for the better uh, and something to be proud of. I mean, I, I think there was a, a reference actually to the Swindon, Swindon being an ugly, average town. Well, we don't want either of those things. We want to make a great town. I want it to be above average, actually giving the people an involvement in its, in its future and always to be involved, actually, to be proud of our town. Obviously, you can vote for us. We've been on that trail with you. Yes. I wanted to know if it worked. Thank you very much. I apologise for getting your name wrong. You've got a very boring name like Green. It's very easy, but then we've got a gentleman from a non-boring Green. Uh, Bill, would you like to start? Before you do start, though, as I said at the beginning, because we've never done this before, and looking at the numbers, I just wonder whether we should perhaps not stop after this for teas and coffees and just go straight into questions. I'm going to take questions from the floor. Is that okay with everybody? Because I just feel at the moment, you know, the numbers, it's, it's sort of rather intimate little group. We break it up. So I'm sorry. Then we've got a bit longer to think. Okay. Right, could you like to? Right, well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, 
Thank you, Andy, for those kind words. And thank you, Stan, for all your work you've done over the years. And I think I've known you practically the whole time you've been here. And uh, as Andy remarked, there's a lot of overlap between the policy of maybe Labour and Liberal and Green. But I think fundamentally, Greens are very, very distinctive because we do have a very clear view of the world, a view of the planet, and a view of economy, and a view of society, which is, which is critically different from the so-called main, main parties. Now, Stan and Andy's mentioned um, the economy, and, and they're all in favour of economic growth. Now, we've seen in Swindon, so-called uh, expansion of Swindon, what we've seen is uh, the town probably over doubled the size since I've, I've been lived here about 40 years, and it's probably over doubled during that time. But what, what do we see? We see these massive multinational corporations, you know, with Zurich, Nationwide, and uh, all the rest of them, massive companies, they've got no interest in the locality. All they're interested in is squeezing a profit out of the workers of Swindon and sending it to Tokyo, Zurich, New York, you name it. The money, you, so you have not got a local economy in Swindon. So one of the key issues of a green economy it is a local one. Lo, lo, to employ local labour, use local products, and to reduce the impact on the, um, the resources of the world and the environment. Now, a few years ago, environmentalism was the buzzword. All the parties jumped on the brand wagon and said how green we were and so on. But we've seen, whether it's Labour in government or it's a Tory Liberal coalition, they've all backtracked on, on their so-called concern for the environment. Now, if you're an unemployed person in Swindon, maybe you don't think that climate change and global warming is a tremendously important issue if you're a if you're unemployed, you're homeless, you're going to so many interviews and so on. Obviously, that's not the case. That's not going to be your chief concerns. But as a Green, you've got to look at both issues of social justice and economic justice and ecological justice. So there are these three strands. So Green policy is to try and promote employment but not employment with those national, multinational companies or huge corporations that don't give a damn about the locality, but to try and um, encourage uh, local industries, cooperatives, self-employment, small firms, and so on. And uh, in Swindon, we've not seen, seen this. It would be very hard for you to set up your own business, to have a little workshop, a little business, and so on, because. Uh, you know, there's a, a lot of facilities, the rents are so high, and you know, that sort of thing would be very, very difficult. Um, now, one of, the thing they, one of the major issues in politics at the moment, of course, is the so-called deficit. Now, why have we got this deficit? It's not because the, the ordinary people have been properly well, they perhaps have run up their credit cards and so on, but not, that's not the chief reason why there's a global financial and economic crisis. It's, it's because of the, the whole, if you like, if you excuse the term, the capitalist system which, which, we, which is created where greed and profit is the main motivation for the economy, whether it's the local economy here, whether it's national, whether it's across the world. Now, a green economy will not be one that's just purely profit. It's got to be, you've got to be looking at what are the implications of the industries you're doing? What, what are the implications of use of resources? What are the implications of employment? And so green policy is to promote a green new deal, a green, green economics, where you're going to put your own investment not into a huge financial institution, huge multinationals and so on, but put it into um, massive energy conservation, things like a, wind and solar power, tidal power, developing most efficient in machinery and so on, improving transport. Now, for example, in Swindon, we're very, very car dependent. And uh, we've seen recently how, how vulnerable we are. If there's a, 
the tank was driving straight, you know, in two or three days the whole country would collapse. So this is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, so a green economy we're looking at rather than a massive trade, you know, with air, with aircraft, with ship, with, with lorries, you know, with developing local economies, you're trying, trying to reduce to reduce world trade where it's um, having an adverse effect on everybody. Um, so, so this is critical. So we are very, very different from the so-called main parties. We want economic growth, but it should not business as usual, as, they, as Labour and Tory are saying. It's got to be green growth. We want to look at social justice. We've got to look at critically things like global warming, things like the oil oil supplies running out, the pollution increasing and so on. Maybe in Western Europe and North America, gradually perhaps reducing <coughs> the impact that we see in <coughs> countries like China and India and so on. Again, you know, are they going to copy our example? Or is it a more sustainable alternative? Um, now, on the question of the council tax, which is a big, big issue, um, now the Tories have been very clever. They're, instead of trying, uh, allowing local, local authorities to raise their own money, um, they uh, have this system where they allocate so, so many funds from central government. And they, so this year you had a you had a freeze of council tax, but this is just because the government had bribed the local councils to keep their levels um, at a steady rate. But on the other hand, having massive cuts. <coughs> now, having massive cuts is no way to run an economy. If you're going to have massive cuts, I mean the full Tory cuts we're experiencing in conjunction with the Liberals, but we're still going to have a, a, half the cuts are still going to come from Labour as well. But these cuts are, are going to have a very, very damaging effect and going to reduce the reduce taxation, reduce the income available for both local, central and local government. So what we need is to in, put this investment into, put people into work in, in, into a green economy, raise, raise the amount of economic activity, <coughs> raise taxation, not, not reduce it, the new, reduce the tax on the rich like the, the Tories and the Liberals want to do from 50% to 40% 45% and try and um, uh, and also with the local taxation at the moment on the, on the uh, the banding of properties again, this is, you're letting off the very rich people altogether, so Local, local, local authorities should have the power to um, raise their own revenues and to raise where people have big properties, where businesses are having more a, a detrimental effect on the environment, then they should pay more local taxes. Now, the, the three main parties would shy away from this, but you know, if, if we're serious about this deficit, then you've got to raise money from where the money that money is being the source of that money, which is the huge profits from these these uh, multinational companies, and also the there's that sort of one percent very very rich people in the country that are you know literally getting away with murder with their taxation, whether it's through uh, uh, tax havens in the Caribbean or Switzerland or Isle of Man or wherever. You know, and obviously the Tories and the Liberals aren't, aren't going to grasp that metal and they're not going to really get to grips with the basic economic problems. So, I haven't bored you too much. You've got three votes. Unfortunately, there's only one green vote, but that means you can definitely vote for one green and you've got a choice of the others. I would say Labour, <laughs> Liberal, Tweedledum, Tweedledee, Tories. <laughs> Tories, <laughs> Tories definitely know. <laughs>